Okay, yet an another tutorial. And um, this is a rigging problem that I've been working on for a while and can never get any answers. And it's how do you have a guy fight uh, using uh, two-handed swords? Uh, let's see, where's my setup? Okay, looks like everything is okay. Let's go to uh, show the bones. Okay, there we go. And um, okay, so as you can see, he's got the standard kind of, he's got his leg, leg IK here and stuff like that. And everything else is really the standard setup that I always do. If you see my leg IK tutorial, then you know what the controls down here do. That's why I've hidden everything that I don't absolutely need. Um, but uh, what I've added here is a control here, um, Y to rotate, Shift F7 to go to local coordinate row, lo mode for myself. And um, and then all you gotta do, I have added this control here on his chest, I'll go to the side view, and all I have to do is rotate this and he will start swinging the sword. And if I, if I rotate it back and forth, he can block, he can block back and forth. And if you take the sword and rotate it, you can block with the sword, or you can, you can strike with the sword. And the hands and, and the elbows and stuff will go ahead and follow correctly. And if you move the sword up and stuff, he, his, his hands uh, kind of follow it around. I'm not going to get into too much. There's, there's still quite a bit of adjustment you have to do to get the right poses. But um, if you saw the, the Vader sword test, you'll see the type of animation that's capable uh, uh, on this rig. And um, let me go through the basic features of this. Basically, you have an arm setup, and the only thing that's different from a standard arm, I usually just have a shoulder bone and a bicep, a forearm, a wrist, and then the hands. Um, what I've added here is I've added a kind of a shoulder rotation control bone. Now, if we go and uh, let, me, let me show you the hierarchy of this. Control F1 and uh, right click on Vader and expand child items recursive so you can see everything. So we'll go into his. Um, into his chest here. So under his torso here, we've got the shoulder, we've got the shoulder, this this uh, bone to rotate the shoulder, and um, well, it's probably easier if I just kind of show you from here. Um, let's bring up the motion options for this. So what I've done is I've gone in and uh, the actual shoulder bone, I've had this be the termination of the IK chain, so I selected unaffected by IK descendants. And then this bone here, this rotation control, if you go into controllers and limits, remember if you remember from my leg tutorial, you really need to if you're going to have a bone rotating uh, using IK two angles at once, um, you really need to split those angles between two different bones, or else the IK gets all flipping, it flips out and stuff like that. So that's why I've gone and, and set, for example, the pitch and the bank on this one to be controlled by this. And what you can do with with this bone also is um, you can use this to kind of pitch out the elbow. Now, um, if you've ever, I used to take kendo when I lived in Japan. I, I did some kendo classes. Um, and uh, you have to keep your arms sort of like in this kind of hoop shape. And otherwise your, your elbows will, will get too close to your body and you won't be able to get any power. So between pitching, you can, you can get control using the actual, the actual uh, shoulder and you can get control using this to kind of pitch the elbows around. Now I also added, um, this this bone here is also affected by IK. Um, you can see here, I've got the pitch and the bank controlling um, this bone, and I've got the heading and the pitch controlled by this bone. Again, that is in order to split the IK chain between those two. Now this bone here in the elbow has it's all just keyframes, and you can use this also as well as a way, as you can see, you can pitch the elbow around. But I've noticed that sometimes in certain simulations, this uh, control kind of makes the chain flip. So um, actually, I put it in there for various reasons, but um, you might not need it. Um, it's it's there though. Um, this one basically will, will pitch the uh, elbow back around. And then this one here, the, the forearm really only can pitch. Uh, it really only can bend in one direction. And so that's why I've selected that. And then your wrist, is just standard keyframes and then the actual hand itself is set to full-time IK and it's pointing to the arm target and match goal orientation is very important uh, without that the hand won't pitch the hand will not follow the rotation of the uh, lightsaber or the sword and so as you can see when I I have both the right and left hands there's these balls here are the IK goals for these arms and uh, they are both of those goals are parented 
to the um, to the uh, sword or lightsaber in this case, and the lightsaber is parented to this null object, which itself is parented to the torso. So when I rotate the uh, the sword control here, I call it rotator. It's just a null object that I've given this kind of ring shape to, and uh, when I rotate that, the sword rotates. The uh, the IK targets for the hands rotate with it, and the whole thing is controlled in one fell swoop. And as you can see, you can get uh, fairly complex motions uh, very very quickly. And if you've seen the, the sword test that I did, you'll you'll see it, the uh, type of animation that that's capable with this rig. And really, you know, again, you'll have to clean it up because when you get in certain poses, you'll find that uh, certain hands, the hands will maybe pop away a little bit like this, and you'll just have to animate those um, on your own. Now, what if you wanted his hand to reach for the sword, like his hand is free and then reaches for the sword? Well, in that case, instead of having <clears throat> the uh, IK target be parented to this naturally, you would use the uh, go to uh, motion modifier and go to parenter and uh, just parent it to the item that you want. You would parent it to the uh, lightsaber, for example. I'm not going to do that because it's going to screw everything up that I already have, but that's the basics of using this rig. Um, if you need more information about that, go ahead and, and write me a comment or something, because it is a little bit of a complex thing, but um, the, the, basic, the basic idea, again, is shoulder not affected by IK. Let me bring up the motion again. Shoulder unaffected by IK. The um, rotation control for for the shoulder um, set it to pitch and bank, and the sh the uh, bicep heading and pitch. Then this elbow control here is keyframed. Uh, if you want that, you, it's not necessary. Then the uh, forearm is set to pitch. Wrist is keyframes, and the hand itself full time IK and match goal orientation. Um, one thing I found is that. There's this weird bug where sometimes when you select match goal orientation, if your goal object, like a null object, has been sized up, you'll see the hand kind of explode. It'll look like it's it's some gigantic hand that's like ten times its normal size, and you'll just have to select that bone and um, and size scale it down. It's some weird bug in Lightwave I found. Uh, so if that happens, don't get scared. Um, it can be remedied by just scaling the. Uh, the hand bone down. The rest of the bones will scale with it. I hope this uh, rig uh, idea will help you out with your own uh, rigging ideas.